The topic of this video is solving systems of equations by substitution or elimination. All right, one thing we need to be aware of when working with linear systems is that it is possible that by using the substitution method or the elimination method, all variables will be removed from our problem. When this happens, we know we're dealing with one of two special cases, parallel lines, which have no solution to the system, or coincident lines, which have infinitely many solutions to our system. The following chart gives us some information about the number of solutions and the kind of system represented by the equations when we see them in our problems. Let's look at this together. The first column tells us the kind of equation we get after using the substitution or the elimination method. The second column tells us the number of solutions to the system based on the resulting equation. And the third column tells us the type of system we're dealing with based on the resulting equation. Let's now move one row at a time. Row one, let's say you use the substitution or elimination method. And after you're done, you get a resulting equation that looks something like a solution, like y equals four or x equals zero or q equals negative five, generally something of the form variable equals number. Then the number of solutions to the system is one, and the type of system is consistent independent. Let's look at our second row. Let's say you've completed the substitution or the elimination method, and in so doing, all of your variables have been canceled or eliminated. Well, that will leave you with something with no variables in it, and that will either represent a true statement or a false statement. If it's a true statement, like zero equals zero, or three equals three, or negative two equals negative two, or generally speaking, any equation of the form number equals same number, then there are infinitely many solutions to your system. And the type of system is referred to as consistent dependent. The third possibility also assumes that all variables cancel out, but this time leaves you with a false statement, such as zero equals three, or one equals two, or negative two equals 4.7, or more generally, any equation of the form number equals other number. In this case, we're dealing with a number of solutions that would be zero, no solution, and the type of system is referred to as inconsistent. Remember that the solution of a system of two linear equations is the collection of all points, if any, that the lines on the graph have in common. In most cases, this is the one point where the two lines cross. But what if the two lines don't cross at all? Then they are parallel and there is no solution to the system. And what if the equations for the lines look different but actually represent the same line? Then every point on the line is a solution of the system. To better illustrate these concepts, consider the following diagram possible solutions to systems of two linear equations. If you've determined that there is one solution, which is a consistent system with independent equations, then when you graph both lines, you should see a diagram that looks like this, two lines that cross at a single point. However, if you've determined that there is no sol solution, which means you have an inconsistent system with independent equations, that tells you that you must be dealing with two lines that are parallel. They don't cross, that's why there's no solution. And if you determine that you're dealing with an infinite number of solutions, which is a consistent system with dependent equations, then when you graph both lines, you find that one is sitting directly on top of the other, and therefore they have all points in common. There are an infinite number of points in common to both lines. 